Do you feel safe? Because if you're American, polls are showing that you don't. Since the pandemic, there is a surge in sales of ammunition, weapons, fire weapons, any kind of weapons. During the pandemic, people were scared that other people might come and rob them. But even after the pandemic, the surge in sales of fire weapons and ammunition didn't go anywhere. You can clearly see in Los Angeles, in New York, in Chicago, in biggest cities of United States, this surge of crime. And that's why people are weaponizing themselves as much as they can. Well, for sure, if the general public is starting to buy more and more firearms, you will have more and more crime. No, we are buying more arms because of this surge in crime. But those arguments lead nowhere. Oh, what a tragic ending. Unbelievable. What is curious though, it's how in the past years, in the part of the world that humans unethically perceive as the civilized world, you can see how the general public has more and more mistrust in the police and all the penitentiary system. Of course, the data will be different from country to country. And for sure, the perception is going to be different from person to person. If you live in a small but a very bourgeois town somewhere in France, not Paris for sure, not one of those big cities with a lot of people, per consequences, a lot of crime. No, but if you live in a small bourgeois, almost village where everybody knows each other and where everybody is, well, wealthy enough, for sure you're gonna have this feeling that everything is good and the police is great and there's no much crime going on. The Anthony Moffitt is you living in suburbs of Chicago and hearing every day, every morning as an alarm, you hear those puff, 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 puff going on in the streets and then you hear helicopters, you hear the police racing. So for sure then, you know, the perception of this little bourgeois in France and of this, uh, let's say, young immigrant in Chicago is going to be very dramatically different. But what we can see overall through all the so-called civilized countries, you can see this surge in crimes A and B in mistrust in police and penitentiary system. So more and more people are feeling less and less safe. And I know that's a super positive topic to talk around Christmas and New Year. I know also that a lot of people here in the United States are very concerned with their safety. I know that a lot of uh, people from France and Germany are also more and more concerned with their safety. I'm not even talking about the countries like Poland that are not only concerned with their safety in general, but you know, they have this war going on and they are a little concerned with Russian ambi ambitions, this surge in Nazis inside their countries. I'm not talking how safe people are feeling themselves in Russia, because that would be, um, that would be mostly a joke to ask Russian people, do you feel safe nowadays? <laughs> I presume that might also be a joke in China when you're asking people who are very, very not happy with their government, do you feel safe in China nowadays? So let's talk about safety and what can you do to improve those very fragile questions of your own safety in the streets and in life in general. And let's talk about the penitentiary system first, where this distrust, mistrust in police comes from. And then we'll talk about, well, obviously, guns. Guns. And all that comes with should people have guns? Is it okay or will the society completely Running wild, lost control, running wild, 
Also, let's talk about death penalty. I know that a lot of human rights advocates are pushing against it. For sure, they look like the good guys. Human rights, right? Death penalty is bad and death is bad. Did we really achieve this point of our evolution when we are capable to run a society without a death penalty? And that's a tricky question. To be honest, not a lot of people have the balls to talk about sincerely and openly. Let's try. Let's check if we, ladies and gentlemen, and all the non-binary people, if we have balls for that. First two important concepts, shape of the head and ice cream and well. What does that mean? Let's go for the shape of the head first. Don't bring Heinrich Himmler into it. It's not about the physicality of your skull and the way it's shaped. No, it's about your way of thinking. Let's imagine you and me somehow together, we are a humble feudal lord in 13th century Germany. We have five villages on our lands. The population of those five villages is hardly 1,000 person. I mean, it's way below 1,000 people. All those people, most probably, they know each other very well. Their way of thinking is very similar. Their principles of life, the way they perceive the world, their values are similar. So it's easy for them to understand each other since generations after generations, they lived on the same lands. Do we need police to control them? No, we don't. I mean, we'll definitely have some dozens of professional killers, but we'll use those guys to acquire more land, to importune our neighbors. We are not going to use the professional killers the men of arms to fight our own population since they know us, we know them since the moment we were born. Remember, <laughs> together we are a feudal lord. So from the moment we were born, most probably all those people that lived for generations on our lands, they knew, hey, that's the next heir. That's the guy that will be our lord in, let's say, 20 years. So we grew together and each one of us, we and our people, each one of us understands their places, what we are supposed to do in this society and what we are not supposed to do in this society. So we don't need any police most of the time. A 16 year old boy tried to rape a 15 year old girl most probably their families will sort it between each other since they know each other for generations. And most probably this 16 year old boy will not even think about it. Or even if he will think about it, he will never dare to try it in the reality since all his family knows the family of the girl. Another important thing, in this 13th century community, we are all obviously codependent. That's important. Obviously codependent. If your men of arms catch three or four, 14, 15 year old boys stealing apples from your garden, they most probably won't kill those boys or won't mutilate them because they know he's gonna be angry. And why are you gonna be angry? because those are people whose hands you need on the fields. There's no such thing as overpopulation. You always need more humans working for you. In the fields, on the battlefield, in all sorts of little commerce. So you want all four or five of those young men, maybe brainless now, and even if they remain extremely brainless. You need them at least on the field or on the battlefield so that they could at least die for you. So under this condition of obvious codependency, you will try not to harm uselessly people around you since your wealth depends on the work 
and productivity of those people. But who your men of arms will most probably kill if they catch uh, these persons stealing your apples, foreigners? <laughs> He's nothing more but a bandit. He's giving you nothing. He has no input in your society, but he's trying just to steal from it. So that's also a very important concept, the concept of the input in the society. When you can bring something on the table, when you're not a parasitic being. You don't have to be a foreigner to be a parasite. In lots of cases, foreigners are much more beneficial to the society than brainless and pretentious brood that became parasitic. The moral of the story is absolutely not foreigners are bad. Any country needs new blood and new ways of perception, new ways of thinking that foreign people bring. The moral of the story is don't be a parasite. The world will get rid of you. Also, this foreigner that your guards will catch will be treated by them badly because most probably he has another shape of the head. Since he's a foreigner, he didn't grow up with them. He perceives the world in a different way, which makes communication with him harder. Understanding of this person becomes harder. And if your men of arms are as stupid as the majority of people are, and they hate thinking, they hate putting this effort in trying to understand another person, then most probably they will be much more inclined to beat him to death since they don't want to listen to him, don't want to understand him because, well, it's just too much effort for them. They understand easily people from their neighborhood, but they can't understand people with another shape of the head. And by this moment, the majority of you viewers will be like, hey, wait a second, this is bad, right? You're supposed to make this effort of understanding your neighbor, even if your neighbor has a completely different shape of the head. You're supposed to make those few extra steps. And yes, that's true and you're right. Well, an ice cream. If I ask you what kind of ice cream do you prefer, and let's say 100 people will answer down below, we're gonna statistically find out that your answers will be mostly similar. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, the most general flavors. But then there will be some people that will come with something very curious, like cucumber ice cream. The more flavors of ice cream we have, the merrier. Ice cream is a topic one can have 1,000 different opinions on. There are topics you can't have two different opinions on. Imagine a village in the Sahara, in the desert, they don't have running water. They have only one well with pure water that you can drink. The subject on which you cannot have two opinions is should you or should you not shit in this well? If everybody or just even one person starts to shit in the well, everybody is gonna die sooner or later from cholera and dysentery. There is no way of having two opinions on this matter. No, I just heard God and God told me personally that I should shit in the well. No, you don't understand. This is our traditions. This is how our ancestors did it. Our mighty ancestors shitted in the well, so we must shit in the well as well. This is my opinion. It's a democratic country, isn't it? So this is my opinion that I can shit in the well and people can shit in the well and should do so. I'm just expressing my opinion. Ice cream? Yeah, great. Let's have 1,000 opinions on it. The only one well with drinking water. This is not a question of opinions. You do not shit in this well, period. Seems to be obvious, right? But you know what humans have a huge problem with? To understand when it's a matter of opinions and the more opinions you have, the merrier. And when it's not a matter of religion, opinion, whatever, when it's just a matter of common sense. The society that bans as many flavors of ice cream as you want, this society is effed up. Because 
all the joy, all the happiness, all the creative spirit will die out in such a society. But a society... Oh, really? This is your religion? Oh, right. Then, then shit in our unique well. It's, it's, it's okay. I suppose if, if God told you so... This society it is effed up as well because they all gonna die out of one most miserable disease, the lack of common sense. And here, let's slide in two words on common stereotypes that are blatantly false. You cannot change people. No, you can change people and you must change people. If you don't want to finish with a effed up planet, but actually the planet will be fine, the humanity will be effed up. If you don't want a miserable end for our race of big apes, then you should change people for the better. Your intellect is something you were born with. Yes, some children are naturally more attentive to the reality than others. Some children are more open to the reality, more curious, and this is the basis of any intellect. When we are saying somebody smart, somebody intelligent, what do we even mean by that? We mean, hey, this somebody can quickly input information, can quickly sort it out and quickly get information out and communicate information. So it's all about how you are working with the information about the world, the information about the reality and about yourself. How quickly can you process information? When we are saying that the child A is more intelligent than the child B, what we mean is the child A is more attentive to the reality, can input more information, can calculate more information, and actually all those abilities can be built up. Intellect is like muscles. You can build it up, but it takes work. And people are just too lazy and too easy to frustrate because when you can't get something, when your intellect, your brain is just too stupid and too weak, what are you doing, dear viewer? Are you saying to yourself, no, I'm going to work harder and I'm going to just understand this concept I can't understand right now. I will not give up and I will process the whole chunk of this information that scares me. Are you doing this or are you getting frustrated and angry and walk away? And this is why people are dumb. At every chunk of information that seems too big to them, too difficult to them, they get frustrated and walk away. You people, you want a quick and easy results when the real life is rarely quick and never easy, but with your dumb expectations, you get frustrated and you walk away hating the world, hating life for things it never promised to you, for it never promised to be quick and easy at every of your tiny actions. And hear how you get all those Nazi mass shooters, because those are people who do not want to deal with the reality. They do not want to accept accept and acknowledge things they suck in. And this mindset of the world being your enemy, you know how you get it? When you're that afraid of running into any negative feedback, and you know why are you afraid of any negative feedback? Because this negative feedback shows you that you suck. Instead of working with things you suck at and becoming better at them, what do humanity, like a good chunk of humanity does? Suppressing the emotions of any emotion, except frustration. Because frustra your frustration is so big, you can't even suppress it. Being fluffy unicorns, dancing on rainbows. So people suppress their emotions or lie to themselves like, no, 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 I'm good. Or trying to find some scapegoats like, no, it's not me who sucks. I got this negative feedback, not because I suck, but because of somebody else. That's the bad guy. I don't suck, but here's the bad guy. And exactly this mindset leads to those guys or these guys or to mass shooters the mindset 
No, I don't want to acknowledge any unpleasant truth about myself because I just don't want to work with it. Because obviously when I was born, the three kings from heaven or the 25 angels came down to me and said, hey, you're never gonna be stupid. Things are always gonna be easy for you. No matter what you put your eyes on, that thing is gonna be quick and easy for you. Where from you people get those expectations about yourself? and about life. It's elementary, my dear Watson. In which society will you use guns and violence more? In a society of open-minded people that are making this extra effort to understand each other, especially when their shapes of the head are drastically different. In a society where people are curious and where they are open to any knowledge, any information, even the information that they will not like about themselves. In a society where people are responsible for changing themselves, even when it takes efforts and work and concentration, or you will most likely use violence in a society where people are denying any work, denying their duties, because any step in the world could show them some negative feedback, some things they don't want to know about themselves, how they suck, actually. And so, those creatures are too afraid to communicate and all their communication is pretty much their anger, fear and frustration. So every time they interact with the world, no matter how good this interaction will be, they will actually feel offended. Something will punch them in their fragile ego. In which society you will use violence more? Also, which society is more prone to confuse the ice cream topics with the one and only well in the desert topic? The society of people that are open to information, are not hiding from the reality, are not running from the truth, even when this truth hurts, or the society of people that are trying constantly to prove to their own brains that they're not stupid. They don't want to get smarter because that's too much work. They actually, all their life long, they're only proving aggressively to their brains and the world, actually to themselves mostly, that no, they are not dumb. Which society, the society of intelligent people or the society of self-lying idiots will be more prone to confuse the ice cream topics with the one and only will topic? Because exactly this confusion, you forbid all the ice cream flavors except one and just one, but at the same time, you're okay with shitting in the only one well that provides you your drinking water. This confusion leads to blood, to wars, to everything that humans love and practice all those 10,000 years of well-known history. <laughs> there is just one thing that will solve all the problems communication shaping people the way you need people to be for the society to be more productive more homogeneous and more balanced but what is a balanced society a balanced society will be a society where the gap between those creatures and people who are more or less able to work with information and not hide from it that's also that's not it's not a switcher on or off like either you're a worm who cannot do anything with the world either you're a superhuman that can everything 
no it's not a swisher it's a whole scale it comes in all the shades but a balanced society still will be the society where the gap between people who are getting offended by the reality since they badly don't want to work with it and people who are actually doing something with their lives who are able to change themselves this gap wouldn't be that dramatic But the key solution is definitely to get smarter and harder and harder not like Wednesday when you're constantly afraid of getting hurt, but actually when you're not afraid of getting hurt anymore. Because you know that life hurts and you will get hurt eventually. And well, you just, you'll just get hurt and then work through it. That's it. That's the only way. You get hurt and you work with it and you become a better person. Is it correct to say that the police and the whole society is now in a drastic need of better education, especially better emotional education? Yes, for sure. But that's easy to say and much harder to do. And it's good to remember that the police is just a tool. Is a hammer good or bad? If you have too many idiots in the police, that means that you have too many idiots in the society. For the police is as good or as bad as the society is. But let's focus on education. When I'm saying education, I'm not talking about algebra, geography, or psychology classes. I'm talking about, you take this blob of a human, this spineless and brainless blob, let's be honest, that is too lazy to interact with the world, that thinks that life should be quick and easy. Everything in life should be quick, easy, and affordable. You take this blob and you evolve this blob in a human being, in a person that can and will put effort in understanding the world, not afraid to get hurt in any way because, well, that's life. Being hurt, that's just being human. So here, education is not about data you put in your head, actually. It's about who you become. It's about taking a blob, spineless and brainless, and turning it into a human that is able to interact with information and comprehend himself, herself, themselves, however you put it. And when we talk about education in these terms, there are two problems. First, humans are faint-hearted and lazy. They don't want to confront any of their problems. They don't want to confront their ego, their vanity. They don't want to, to do, actually, the real job, the real work. They want to be constant spectators of their life. The majority of you, dear viewers, think that your life is a movie, that you have to do no effort whatsoever. You're just here in the big room watching your life on the screen and getting offended when and if your life on this screen is not as good as you somehow wanted it to be. What do you do with such homo sapiens? You really need sometimes not to gently push them in the right direction, helping them with a lot of flattery, like how good they are. No, they're, they're like, they, they are perfect. They are the first, but from the rear end, but still the first, but on the rear end. God, with your ego and vanity, how much effort one should put into just making you realize what the reality is. <laughs> the second point one 
can change humans and should change humans. But at the end of the day, there will always remain a small percentage of creatures badly preferring death to changes, escaping any involvement, any responsibility. And they want everyone around to be the same garbage as they are, to live as miserably as they do. None of those two problems can be fixed with this covert parody of kindness that the insecure and infantile majority seeks, a parody that just makes things worse as chocolate with diabetes. People need kindness, not flattery. Nobody wants a miserable life. Nobody wants to be miserable. And bad choices lead people into misery. So the majority of people, if you work with them, they are willing to change once they can grasp you, like grasp what do you want from them and how they can achieve the things you want from them. Does any government on this earth work on educating people this way when you take a blob and you're transforming, you're evolving this blob into a human? No. Just no. But that's the solution to the human stupidity problem. The human stupidity problem that offshoots into a lot of branches, uh, social issues, political issues, economical issues. A lot of economical issues are just waiting their time to come because, well, that's also a good topic for a whole another video. All the issues with violence and crime, they also come to the same root. And until this root is addressed, Everything else is just temporary measures, like patching bullet wounds with band-aids. And this is, my dear viewer, the most important idea of this video. So you can stop watching, but you can stay with me and let's see together what guns and capital punishment add to the picture. This type of educational project from blob to human beings, I with my team, we are running in Russia, in all the post-Soviet Union countries, as a matter of fact. And yes, it gives you a valuable experience with humans. And we might do the same thing for the English-speaking audience in 2023, maybe. But well, for now, guns ladies and gentlemen, and all the non-binary people. The 2020s have already been called the golden age of cocaine because the volume of productions never were that huge. All this cocaine has to be sold somewhere, so it floods the European markets. Not only the Americans now, but the Europeans too. Cocaine always bring violence. Violence that rhymes with guns. So if you live in Europe, be prepared. Chances are that in the next decade, you will have much more discourses about guns in the media and much worse, you will have just much more guns in the streets. In Europe, like here in the States, politicians, journalists, bloggers will go more and more about what is the best gun policy. Well, obviously the best gun policy is when you have all the guns and the bad guys don't have any. Actually, when you have all the guns and nobody else in the world has any gun better than you. That's the best policy. The good policy is when nobody has guns except for the police and the army forces. What is the real gun policy? Something that we really can achieve. And here's the problem. When it comes to guns, people do not want to understand two simple truths. No policy whatsoever can remain unmutable in this world. It goes for the economy, for the politics, for the guns too. No policy whatsoever can remain unmutable. 
Even worse, the world is changing faster and faster and faster. So the laws and the policies have to adapt to the society faster and faster and faster. And all our uh, law creating um, structures are just too long. They are just too slow in comparison with this need of faster adaptation to the societal needs. The second thing, there's no one size fits all. It's like in cancer. You cannot combat cancer with just one thing, one discovery, because there's too many different types of cancer. And for each different type, you need to take different actions and solve different problems. Guns are just a tiny part of the huge human violence topic. And human violence is, you can't even call that a problem since it's not a problem. It's mostly a characteristic of the human species that sometimes is more mild and in other times is much more pronounced. Let's resume a little. You cannot find one solution. Let's ban all the guns or let's allow all the guns and all the solutions. The whole complex cannot remain unmutable for a long period of time. It needs to be reviewed as often as the society will need it. And we should remember that in our present, the world is changing faster and faster and faster. So the real gun policy, there is no one gun policy. There's a complex set of rules that are becoming obsolete so quick nowadays that I would say don't put much trust in your government. If you're happy with your government, great. If in your country the government is, well, worthy of your trust, or at least you think so, I'm happy for you. But in any case, don't put much trust in your gut. It doesn't mean go in the streets and start a revolution. What I mean is, you know, what little particle, but a very important one, I find to be lacking in all this gun discourse. It's the personal responsibility part. Humans are great in, you know, theorizing what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Everyone knows that we should be kind and love our neighbors. Seldomly people are able to do so. So there's this theoretical part of what we should or shouldn't do and the real part of what we are really doing with our lives, the way the reality is. And I said it so many times through this video, you humans, you are great at lying to yourself in those two parts what you should and shouldn't do and what you are really doing. So if we stop to be theoretical, here's a video I saw a couple of days ago. It happened here in California in December. I might be wrong with the state, but it doesn't change anything in the message. The following was filmed by a street camera. You have a narrow street, a parked car, a man and a woman coming from behind the corner, and then they are followed by five other people. They stop in this narrow street having this verbal argument that do not seem to be too heated. And then the guy that walked first with the woman, he starts to shoot people just as if he was on a shooting range. He shoots all the five of them. And one can clearly see nobody of all those five people was presenting any physical threat to the guy or to his girlfriend. The guy and his girlfriend get inside the car and go away. What do we have in total? We have two deaths and three wounded. What it was all about? The shooter just got out of the prison and then he decided to go for a night out with his girlfriend. They went for a bar in which the other party was celebrating the birthday of their daughter. It's a grown-up daughter, her parents and her friends. So something happened in the bar between the shooter and the daughter celebrating her birthday. And apparently he tried or did hit 
her in the bar. He was kicked out of the bar, but the parents and the girl herself and some of her friends decided to follow him, obviously because they received no emotional closure. But instead of just an argument in the street, what they got, they got a murder. One can indefinitely argue about how the former convict should not be allowed to possess guns. Actually, I doubt the gun, the guy, the shooter used was a um, legal gun, that he was legally allowed to have it. So one can argue indefinitely about what uh, one should and should not do and what one should allow or shouldn't allow. But if you were one of the friends of this girl who was hit in a bar by a crazy guy who just got out of the prison. And here too, one can argue indefinitely about how they shouldn't have been followed him in the street. But uh, we are all humans, we can easily understand them if they received no emotional closure and felt themselves well, let's say abused, they followed him, obviously talking to him. Once again, we can indefinitely argue about was that wrong, was that right, and that they shouldn't have done it, but they did it. If you were one of the friends of this girl or her father or her boyfriend, wouldn't you do the same? And you wouldn't expect the crazy guy to have a gun and even more not only you would not expect him have a gun you will not expect him to use it on you especially when and if you didn't plan to harm him physically and the guy wasn't shy in using his gun when he started to shoot and when he shot the father when he shot the girl the, the girl herself uh, her friends were obviously terrified. One of the women was just standing like this. with uh, she, she couldn't grasp what was happening and he shot her. She definitely was no threat to him, but he shot her. He shot people running away from him in their backs. So if you were the father or the girl or her friends, all of a sudden it's not theoretical to you. It's not about what we should and what we shouldn't do. You're in this position when a crazy guy already shot your father and you have no gun and you have no way to defend yourself. And no, you didn't expect the situation to escalate that fast and that crazy, but you're already in this situation. And either you get shot as well and you die or you become a handicapped person, either you act. At that precise moment, there's no government, no police, no policy that can help you. You have only yourself. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying that in all those media discourses about allowing or forbidding the guns, we are jumping through a very important subject when people are present in their lives, when people are responsible in, for their lives in any kind of situation, especially in stressful ones. And when we start to approach this finicky subject of gun possession from the point and the perspective of responsibility, of personal responsibility, things are becoming much easier. Another two stories. Here we have a mass shooter in an LGBT club that got beaten down by a drag queen and another customer of the club. Why did this guy came to the club? To prove himself that he's not a non-entity. He wanted this, oh my God, when people that usually do not notice him, people he hates because he hates himself so badly, but those people he want to get out his anger and frustration on, they should react like little and powerless insects with this oh, surprise and fear. So instead of getting this self-validation, this yes, finally, I can do something, he got humiliated 
even more. And that's the best way to get rid of mass shooters because actually when you are hating the society and you want to prove something to the society, you are going after this. Oh my God. Oh, I am so scared of you. Oh, please do not kill me here. I am begging you. You're definitely not going after some more humiliation. And yes, there's a lot of details in this play from the moment we should stop bullying at schools to a lot of other little things. But if we want to get rid of mass shooters, it's not only a question how to make guns unattainable. It's mostly and first of all, the question of how do those people think? Why do they do? things they do and how to prevent it in its root. And it's preventable in its root when everybody around do not react. Oh my God. Educate yourself. If ever you fall in this pit, if ever you are in this shitty situation so that you don't have this feeling of being completely powerless and not knowing what you can do. Next. The second story is a footage from a security camera. You see a 22-year-old father of a family coming home, but not alone, with five guys. The first guy is holding an Uzi to the head of the 22-year-old father. He's wishing very hard to rob this guy and he's waiting for the guy to open the door and go through the whole security system the guy has installed at his house. So that's also a point not against the security systems, but it just shows you how all the cameras you can get, how, how all this uh, technical security can be easily by past. What happened here, like with the 22 year old guy, he got shot, but he got caught first in the streets when they approached him and it's five against one and it's people with Uzis against a guy obviously without any gun so they approached him and the conversation was pretty simple either you come with me at your house and give me everything you have valuable either I shoot you down the irony is that the guy still did get shot. He was murdered by those people at his house before the eyes of his children. I'm not sure if they shot his wife, but they definitely wounded his wife robbing his house. He might as well answer no just there in the streets and got shot just there in the streets instead of leading them all at his own house. Would those guys attack somebody capable of planting a bullet in their guts? They would think twice because nobody wants to finish their day at their own basement with a 45 caliber bullet inside. I'm not saying give guns to everybody and I'm not saying that having a gun would definitely save this 22 year old guy's life. What I'm saying, dear viewer, is educate yourself. Don't be lazy. I'm very happy for you if you live somewhere in Germany, for example, and all these violence um, problems are very far from you right now. But even then, I would strongly advise you to educate yourself and to think about different possible scenarios. Because when it comes to violence, people don't want to get violent with people that can actually respond with violence. That's the point. Any mass shooter, any little petty gangster, they are daring to attack you because they know they have this sometimes very false conviction that you will not respond back. As I already said, mass shooters are going after this emotion of feeling themselves powerful against people who are surprised, who are frozen with fear and with the lack of knowledge. What can I do in such situation? The armed robberies also tend to 
be much less common in areas where all those petty gangsters know that they can catch a bullet in response. You want to go for an iPhone or a watch when you know that you still will be safe. Well, maybe if you get caught, you go through court in a prison. And if you're from a very bad neighborhood and with a bad childhood, well, prison might be not new to you. But there's a huge difference between I'm going to prison or I'm catching two or three 45 caliber bullets. And the difference is painful. Once again, my point isn't give guns to everybody right now. No, but my point is, if we watch the world, not only United States, but the world, the way it is in reality, not how it's supposed to be or how we should be or what we should do with the world. But if you watch the world closely, the real world, what you will see is that it's kind of inevitable that you will have more and more guns in the streets. No matter where, of course, you will have more guns in the streets here in the United States than, for example, in Germany, because those are very different countries with very different background towards the guns. But still, what is inevitable today, dear viewer, is this rise in the quantity of firearms in the streets. Don't be too trustful towards your government or your police. If they work, great, I'm glad for you. But I know that even in the United States, a lot of people, like the majority of people, they don't want to have guns. Or even if they buy guns, they don't want to educate themselves too much on those subjects. And on one hand, I can completely understand it. There's just so many better things in life than, you know, educating yourself on a subject you do not enjoy particularly. But on the other hand, you never know when you might need this knowledge. What am I doing now? I'm in a club, at a restaurant, at a school, at a university with a mass shooter. How do I act right now? Last but not least, please don't you fall, dear viewer, don't you fall for this fake kindness that is nothing else but flattery, self-validation and righteousness. When I was editing the video for Wednesday, I was searching for some footage from Russian prisons. Wednesday in Russian prisons, what does it have in common? Go check it. But I found this video of uh, a young male, 16, 17 years of age, a convicted young male talking to police officers who were explaining to him that no, there's no way. And he is going in this punishment isolation cell and punishment isolation cell doesn't sound like Hawaii. It doesn't sound like your favorite vacation spot. Now this young male behaved himself. The words he chose, the tone he chose, he was definitely no political prisoner. This guy is definitely in prison for either a rape, either a murder. He is not there for his political convictions, because for that he extremely lacks intellect. With some creatures, you're talking to them and then you understand that they might resemble a human, but in their evolution, they're definitely not on a level to be a human yet, because they lack the intellect, the emotional capacity, they lack everything a human is supposed to to have. This guy was somebody, something of this kind. I'm trying hard not to call him an animal. I worked with guys like that and I grew up brains in their empty skull. Helped a good deal of them to become people. There was no way to tell from the footage why this guy was convicted for. Then why is he sent to the punishment isolation cell? Could that be just the guards who are being brute animals like he is? It could be. Could that be because he was doing something obnoxious and therefore he was sent to the punishment isolation cell? Yes, it could be. But one thing was obvious. 
from the whole video. You don't want to have animals like this young male around you or especially around your loved ones. And in that, I can assure you, dear viewer, the whole video had a voice over of a human rights activist. The lawyer tried to paint with his wordings this little obnoxious animal as something less obnoxious and less animalistic. That's his job. But the terrifying sentence. Actually, he's just 16. He's not even supposed to be in prison. This guy might also be just 16. How is that helping the wife of the man that has no husband now and a bullet wound or any other kind of wound and then children that are now semi orphans. How is that helping her? The knowledge that this guy is actually 16 and is not even supposed to go to the prison. The young male on the footage from the Russian prison perhaps was facing an outrage from the guards of this prison. Even if, and once again, if he was facing an outrage because we have no way to know what for he was sent to the punishment isolation cell. But even if he was facing an outrage, you could clearly see he's in the prison for something, for a rape or a murder, nothing good. The fact that the penitentiary system, the guards, the police in Russia and in China and in lots of other developing countries is uh, straightforward, cannibalistic and abusive, that's very mildly put. The fact that the penitentiary system sucks doesn't make every prisoner automatically a saint a martyr that shouldn't be in prison. That's something so blatantly obvious, right? No, because in the United States, in European countries, in Russia, in Ukraine, in Kazakhstan, all around the world, you have so many human rights advocates. I'm not saying human rights are bad or you should not advocate in human rights. No, I'm very far from it. But there's a huge difference between actually abiding the human rights, making sure that they aren't trampled and jerking off your ego by how righteous and good and kind you are. There's a huge difference. You think you understand right now watching me like that in your bed or on your sofa, being comfortable and everything. But once, bam, you deal with real life, humans become so blind, so deaf and stupid. And that is just one tiny example of this fake kindness. Because we should do like a whole other video on this subject and this video is becoming just far too long. So please, dear viewer, if you watched the video to this point, remember that kindness and cowardice, kindness and flattery are not the same. I know that it also seems obvious, but I know perfectly well how many people are afraid for their lives, how many people do not feel safe, but don't do anything. Just reading the news, scrolling their Instagrams, TikToks, whatever you get your news on, and waiting for the government to do something. Should we have guns? Shouldn't we ban guns completely? At this moment, it's not even about should we or shouldn't we. It's about please to educate yourself. Grow yourself from a blob to a human. You can't do it alone and I know it perfectly. Well, in Russia, we have already our projects. Here, we might start them in 2023. But do educate yourself. To grow yourself from a blob to a human, at least try. And to educate yourself on the violence subject. What should you do? Think beforehand what would be your reaction in this kind of situation, how to improve your reaction, what you can do to not act and finish like this poor soul shot in front of his children. And yeah, do share this video. I know that nobody's watching one hour long videos. I know that people do watch and share hamsters sneezing, but not useful or especially complicated information, but give it a try. 
And that's enough for today. Yours, France.